Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, I hope your fingers are ready for some bending because this week we're going to take a look at an Albert King style lead. And uh, Albert's notorious for these really powerful bends. In fact, you can obviously hear his influence in Stevie Ray Vaughan's playing and lots of other artists. But um, Albert King played left-handed, so he had the guitar this way. So he would pull when he did a bend. There's a little bit of an advantage there. And another thing is uh, he had his guitar tuned down a half step, so he was in E-flat tuning uh, most of the time, I believe. So anyway, um, I'm not doing that. This is just standard tuning. I like to kind of keep it, um, I don't know, I don't want to introduce too many variables when we're trying to learn this stuff. So uh, if you have an acoustic guitar, this would be one week where you, you're probably going to have a hard time following along. Uh, and if you have light gauge strings and maybe you're tuned down half step, maybe you could, you could uh, hang with it too, but um, this is really more for electric guitar. Um, if you want to download the uh, tablature as well as the jam track and see the part two video, so I'm going to split this video into two parts, uh, you can get all of that at activemelody.com. Just look for EP101. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first part. All right, so before we get started, I did want to just make a little mention that B.B. Uh, King passed away today. I'm sure most of you probably know that by the time you're watching this video, but um, you know, it's just, it's a real loss for the, for the, the blues community. It's a loss for the music community as well, but, I mean, B.B. influenced everybody, everybody that plays the guitar at some point, especially if you're playing lead guitar, uh, you, you're going to do a B.B. King lick, or you're going to want to sound like him, or play like him, and so, just a real loss, and I just wanted to mention that. I'm going to, I was going to try and get a tr little tribute uh, lesson ready today. I'm just not going to have time today. However, this week I will have something. So if you're a premium member, I'm going to have a, an, a little BB tribute type uh, extra bonus lesson in addition to next week's lesson. So be on the lookout for that. It'll come out some point this week. Um, if And I'm always open to ideas, so leave a comment, shoot me an email. If there's a, something that you just got to know how he's doing, um, I'm, I'm definitely open to that. Uh, no ideas yet, but I'll come up with something. So anyway, just wanted to mention that. Rest in peace, BB. All right, so now switching gears to another king, we have Albert King. And so let me talk through the tone that I'm using here real quick. Very easy, actually. I've got the ES-335 Gibson guitar. Albert would play through a Gibson Flying V, or at least that's how I picture him in most of the pictures I've seen of him. Um, he may have had something else, but... Uh, similar pickups that uh, that are in the 335. So I'm on the uh, the bridge pickup, and I have the tone at about 80% in the volume all the way up. I'm playing through a Tube Screamer by Ibanez, a TS-808. And I have the, um, b -b -b the gain at about 40%. But it gets you this nice growl. Um, and that's perfect for playing. Real fat sound like that. Uh, it's perfect for playing... <laughs> Playing that, that type of uh, Albert style lead. He had a little more crunch in his sound, but this is a, kind of the best I can come up with with my my uh, setup. Okay, so this song is in the key of G. It's just a 12 bar blues in G, and you know the jam track. If you've got that, you're gonna you'll notice it's it's very slow. It's at 60 beats a minute, so it's it's easy to kind of play along with. And the very first lick that I played comes in right on the one. So if we're counting this in, you go one two, three, the drum goes da, 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 and then on the one, we come in with this lick. Now let me show you where, what that lick is and where it comes from. Uh, we'll start with what it is. So we're starting here on the uh, eighth fret first string, and uh, I have all three fingers kind of lined up behind that because, as I mentioned in the intro, there's a lot of bends. And so when I'm doing a bend like that, I'm actually not just using the one finger, I'm using all these fingers to help push that string up so you can get more leverage that way. So when you're doing a big bend, just remember, use as many fingers as you can, especially if they're not doing anything. So we're going to do a full bend there on the 8th fret first string, and you're bending up, a full bend is up 2 frets, so you're trying to hit the fret that's, uh, the note that's uh, 2 frets higher, so that would be the 10th fret. So that's where we're trying to get to. Now watch this. So. As soon as we bend, we don't do a release, we bend it, then we stop the sound, and we play the 6th fret 1st string, and then the last note is the 8th fret 2nd string. So it's really just those three notes. But, but the challenge is going to be, for, for you as you're learning this, is going to be 
not releasing when you do the bend. You're going to naturally want to do this. But that's not what Albert does. Albert would bend all the time and, he, and then he would just end it. Now, there's something you can do with your right hand to help with that. Watch my right hand. Notice that. If we do it slowly. So, the right hand comes down and kills the sound so that your left hand can release the tension here and you can come down and play your next two notes, which are these. So even though it's those three notes and it's not you're not doing anything super flashy, uh, if you're new to bending and this is all uh, kind of new to you, this this will be tough, just those three notes. I mean, I, I remember really sweating over trying to do that, and I still don't do it the way he does it. I mean, he, he's just got a totally different thing, but... That's the best I can come up with uh, for, for the Albert bend release thing. Okay, so <clears throat> that's how we start this thing. Now, where does this come from? So we're playing the key of G. So I always do this in every lesson. This will be uh, you know annoying to some of you. But we're playing the G bar chord. It looks like that. Your root fret then, wherever your bar is, that's your root fret. So now we know where home base is for the minor pentatonic scale. So when we're playing blues, that's where we play a lot of our notes from. So it looks like this for the key of G, right? So that's pattern one. All of this is covered in the blues lead course at activemelody.com. Shameless plug. Pattern two is here. This little box. So when I play it, it's coming right out of that little pattern two of the minor pentatonic scale. That's where it is. All right, so the next thing that I play is this little run, which is kind of fast, but it sounds like this. Now let's learn that. It's actually not that difficult, so don't be freaking out yet. It's it's all in the minor pentatonic scale of the key of G, pattern one. So you can see, remember pattern one? We're all right, hanging out right there, so we know kind of the boundaries and where we're working from. So we're gonna start on the third fret first string. Then we're gonna come down to the uh, sixth fret second string. Third fret second string. So we have, now I use my ring finger when I stretch that. Some of you may want to use your pinky. It's just whatever's most comfortable. But those are your first three notes. Now watch this. So we come down here to the, the fifth fret third string and we do a bend, play the note. So sounds like that. Third fret, uh, third string. 5th fret, 4th string. That's how you're going to want to practice that. Now let me back up and play everything up to that point. All 6 notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh sorry, 7. Um, now the way that I'm picking that with the right hand is alternate picking. So I'm going... So you can see it starts on a downstroke, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now at the end of that I went like this. Um, and I heard him play that at the beginning of, um, I think it was Laundromat Blues, if you want to get very specific. He does this little run where he he winds it up that way which i thought that's kind of interesting that's not something i would think to do but um third fret third string fifth fret third string so we're gonna go hit that twice back to the third fret third string fifth fret fourth string so let's put it all together. Let me do it slowly. We have. All right, and up to tempo, it's more like. Oh, that was kind of sloppy. Something like that. Let me play those two parts together. So we have. We have just a. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there's one last little note there. I just kind of, it's almost like you're, if you were singing your voice as it's trailing off, I hit that third fret, third string. Uh, you can do that or you can take it or leave it, but that's, that's how I did it. So, so just watch the intro again and watch how I played the, uh, watch the timing of it. The good thing about, I know a lot of you struggle with timing and I'm actually working on, oh, this is another little thing that I'm com it's coming up. I'll be curious what you think about. I'm, I'm going to do workshops which I think will be cool, but I want to do a whole workshop on timing just to kind of, you know, I know a lot of you struggle with that. So the good news about this song or what I'm doing here when I do this little run, it doesn't really matter when you start it. It's okay to come in a little late. It's okay to come in a little early because you're just doing a riff that it's okay when it start when it begins. I mean, I know that seems weird, but um, I had a hard time when I was tabbing this out. You have to be very specific about where the beat starts. And as I was creating the tab, I realized, man, I would play this different every time I did it. I, I'm not really sure. So I, I came in. There is a beat on the tab, and you can follow that. But um, And the, the tab matches what I did in the intro. But if I were playing this live, I would do, I would do this... I would come in in all kinds of different places. But I would play those same notes. So then I come up here and I play... Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at that. So I'm using my pointer finger to bar on the 12th fret. I'm barring really the first four strings, even though I'm only playing strings four and three. So when I slide in, I'm sliding into the fourth string on the 12th fret, like that. And then I'm going to play the third string on the 12th fret twice. So what you're doing is you're building up to that bend. Those are the first uh, notes that you're going to play. Now, from here, and you know, honestly, I'm not sure how Albert does that. I'm kind of guessing. I, I've heard him use that before. He may do it. He may do it like that. I don't know. But it just seemed easier to do it this way because it's all bunched together. So what we're going to be playing in is we're going to be, at this point, we're going to be in pattern four of the blues uh, minor pentatonic scale for the key of G. When we're playing this, so you know your pattern four looks like this. And you have this little bend area that you can do all kinds of licks from. All that comes from pattern four. So that's where we're at. Okay, so after that, then I'm gonna take my middle finger on the 13th fret second string and I'm gonna do two full bends. Now this is gonna be tough because this may be the hardest part in the whole thing. You're going to do a bend, but you're going to do vibrato at the top of that bend, like this. And why that's hard is you've got to maintain the pressure of the bend while releasing it and pushing it back into position and keeping the tone. It, it's just, it seems almost impossible, but muscle memory over time you'll be able to do it. And that's what you're going to want to try and do is hit that note, but then go a little b below it and a little above it as you're bending it and waving the sound like that. Um, so anyway, I think that'll be one of the toughest things in this whole thing is that bend. Okay. All right, so the next thing that I played was this. Now watch what's going on there. It's kind of cool. It sounds almost kind of sloppy, but um, I think that's obviously intentional. So you start on the third string, 12th fret with your middle finger. And then I'm gonna come back here. And remember, we're in pattern four of the blues minor pentatonic scale. So, so you're not lost. You understand why these notes are working and why Albert would play in this area. So then I'm gonna come uh, here to the 11th fret, second string, and I'm gonna watch this. See what happened? I started on the 11th fret, doing a slight bend. And all, uh, this is where it sounds sloppy. You're kind of pushing the note sharp, not quite hitting something. Then I put my middle finger down on the 12th fret, second string. Pushed it a little farther sharp. Then I take my th um, ring finger and push down on the 13th fret, second string. So all together.
And then what you're going to do is not hit a note. You're not trying to hit a note. You're just pushing it uh, a little bit sharp and play around with that. There's all kinds of nuance you can add. You can make it sound exactly how you want. You're singing now with your fingers. And so when I release that 13th fret second string, watch this. Then I, I'm on the note, which is part of the scale. And that allows me to to kind of land the plane a little bit. It's almost like you're flying a plane in some turbulence, but then you smooth it out and you kind of land it right where you need to. And so for that, it's the 13th fret second string. You're going to hit that three times. 11th fret second string. And then back to the 12th fret third string. Okay, so let's put those pieces together. We'll go from the bend, and, and then we'll I'll show you that part. It'll make more sense. I'll tap my foot too so you have the timing. So we have... Okay. And just play around with that. Those are the notes. You can see the notes are really not that hard to play, play but to get it to sound like something Albert would do, um, there's a lot of genius in that. And, um, you know, I still do, it still doesn't, it's not him, and I can't put my finger on, well, I'm, I'm being specific, I'm doing the stuff he does, but it doesn't sound, doesn't sound the same. So, but we try and get as close as we can to these guys, and that's, you know, that's the best we can do. So then after I land the... I play this. So when I come down to that 12th fret 3rd string, I'm going to play it 1, 2, 3, 4. So you're hitting it, you're letting it... You're shaking it like that, giving it the vibrato, but you're you're kind of hitting it with your with your right hand. So that's what I'm doing with that part. Then I come to the 11th fret second string, and I hit this string, and then I push it. Sl this is another little nuance, but it's key to Albert. You're hitting the note, but you're pushing it slightly sharp while you're giving it the, the vibrato. So it's not major and it's not minor. It's somewhere wavering in between the two. And it, that's what gives it that uh, really a human voice type sound. Okay. Okay, so then we come down and play this leg. Watch this. Now this is uh, another signature Albert. Let's get that first part. So you can see we're doing a lot of this solo. In fact, you could do this entire solo. He will do entire solos in, in this little area. Because you have all these little areas that you can bend and you have a lot you can do. So remember, it's not always about jumping all over the fretboard. You just find a little box. That's what BB did. That's what Albert did. They find their little zone, and then they master that zone. I think that's kind of, that's how you may want to think about this. So, so after, so the next thing then is, we're going to start on the 12th fret 3rd string, and then we're going to come to the 11th fret 2nd string, and we're going to do a full bend with our pointer finger. Watch this. That's a tough one too, because you're using this finger, and you have no other fingers to back it up. You have nothing behind it, so you got to do... Uh, as much of a bend as you can to try and hit this note. So, now watch this. You release it, and then you put your ring finger down on the 13th fret 2nd string. You hit the note, 13th fret 2nd string, let that note resonate, and then you bend it into position to hit the next note. So it, almost that to me has sort of a pedal steel type feel. That's how you're going to practice that. Two, three. And it's just these big push, uh, pushy bends. Again, he had his guitar tuned down a half step, so it made doing bends like that a little easier. In fact, he would bend from here all the way to hit that note, but starting it on this string. 
and I just can't do that. So this is my, in standard tuning, uh, this is my best way to kind of emulate that. So after you hit that, you're not going to release that. You're not going to let that note release. You're going to go. At the top of that bend, you're going to come down and play 11th fret, 2nd string, 12th fret, 3rd string. Then once you're down at the 12th fret, 3rd string, you're going to hit that a few times. Just like you did before. And, we, uh, and then watch this. So again, we're coming back to the 13th fret, 2nd string. Doing a full bend, not a release, very Albert style. And now watch this. Then we come to the 11th fret, 2nd string. And we do that same thing where we push it slightly sharp and give it the vibrato. Hear it? it? Sounds wrong when you do it slow or without the jam track, but when you hear it in context, it'll be you, you'll get it. All right, so we've learned a lot. Let's back up and play everything up to this point. So we have one, two, three. <laughs> Okay, um, so that's what we have for this part one video. Make sure you check out the second uh, video for uh, the other half. And um, I've got, uh, obviously we've got the jam tracks, we've got the tablature, and everything else is available. Just go to activemelody.com, look for EP 101.